It is strongly recommended to watch our previous Linux video before watching this one. This video is strongly based on the first one and you could simply not understand what's going on here if you haven't watched it. The link is in the description. Our Linux gaming test is one of the most successful videos on this channel. Generally speaking, it is not too old and the conclusions we made there are still relevant. However, since Linux evolves with ridiculously high speed, we feel that we really need to do some update on this topic and, take my word, the benchmarks in this update will surprise you. Hello and welcome back to Hardware Lab. There were dozens of the core updates, over 30 updates of Proton, and the countless amount of game launchers updates since our last attempt at the topic. I'm sure that each of them had some major fixes and performance improvements here and there, but the main difference that happened since then is an experimental DXVK update that includes the shader pre-compilation process using the graphics pipeline library. All the DXVK versions above 2.0 with GPL currently don't suffer from shader compilation issues, at least as much as they were previously, and it means that most of the annoying performance problems are now gone, at least in some games. Major games failed to precompile shader using the new edition, but it is still a huge improvement. Theoretically, in the future when GPL edition will be available on Windows machines, it can fix some poorly stuttering games, but this is a topic for another video. And yeah, talking about Windows, we received a lot of feedback under the previous video about Linux gaming that we haven't tested DXVK on Windows in games that show major performance improvement while using it. Today we're gonna test that as well. This time, our test structure will be a bit different than before. Today we are not going to divide the tests into GPU and CPU limited or by API usage. We will simply run the games from the previous video in the conditions where some problems can be found, no matter if it's GPU or CPU limitation, and try to look for an improvement. Recording was done in exactly the same way as previously. Again, CPU limited scenarios were recorded via GPU and GPU limited scenarios were recorded via CPU. However, in some games, if you try to record a CPU bottleneck test with the GPU, it actually becomes GPU bottleneck because of the additional load, and we have no idea how to avoid that issue, but it's not really a major problem to understand the overall picture. Last but not least, this time we decided to be based on Arch Linux. Yeah, a lot of comments were suggesting trying Nobara, Garuda, Arch, Endeavor, or whatever else, but this was the unexpected thing. Everybody is trying to defend his own favorite system and refuse to take all the tests made on other distros as legitimate data. So once again, we welcome you to the comment section where you can state that Vanilla Arch Linux is awful for gaming and we'd better use Manjaro. And finally, let's get straight to the test section, starting with the games that show major performance improvement. The original CPU test in Watch Dogs 2 in our last attempt at Linux gaming was a complete mess. The game was unplayable due to shader compilation status to the point where even a ride around through the city won't be able to fix it. With the XVK2 and GPL shader pre-compilation, the game performs a lot better than ever, outperforming the Windows run by a decent margin.
Assassin's Creed Odyssey and CPU Limited scenario already was a huge success for Linux gaming, with significantly improved performance over the Windows system using the original game's DirectX 11 API. The newer DXVK, driver and all other updates put the Linux advantage here even further. I mean, would you ever expect for Ryzen 3600 to run this generally broken game with over 100 FPS on average? Strange Brigade CPU test showed us some weird results last time we tested that. For some reason, the Windows performance this time got a bit worse than it was before. However, the Linux system saw a noticeable improvement, despite this test having nothing to do with DXVK updates since the game already uses Vulkan as the main API. Coming to ray tracing and GPU limitation, last time when we tested this game with RT features on Linux, there was over 2x performance reduction compared to Windows native TX12. However, things got a lot better now with Linux VKD 3D performance doubled. Despite DXR ray tracing not being a new technology anymore by any standard, it was still somewhat an alpha version feature on Linux, and in fact it still is. So we hope to see some further improvements in the near future. Anyway, at least in some games, RT is now fully playable on Linux, which is really great news. Continuing with the ray tracing improvements, last time the AMD's hybrid demo shows us 3 times less frames per second on Linux than on Windows. This isn't the case now and we again can see a major improvement. So there are obvious performance improvements that can be seen all around in different scenarios on the Linux side. Given that all these improvements were achieved in less than a year, we can clearly say that the gaming on Linux is growing and improving with an unbelievable speed. But what about some games that didn't want to run previously? The majority of them run just well on Linux now, and we can measure their performance as well.
and Godfall, we decided to run a GPU limited settings and it turned out it works pretty well. Sure, the performance on Linux side is a bit worse than on Windows, but this is typical behavior for DX12 titles that use the VKD3D layer. Even the frame time graph on Linux side is a bit more stable. Anyway, that's a fully functional and well running game on Linux. Watch Dogs Legion is a bit of a weird kind of a test. It was recorded using a CPU power on Linux because we tried to create a GPU limited scenario, but with recording it wasn't possible and for some reason recording didn't even affect the performance in this case. Anyway, the performance is pretty close and the game is now fully functional. One more game that had some struggles to run previously and now works perfectly fine, at least from a CPU side. The performance overall is even a bit higher on Linux. For some reason, the final statistic counter in Fall Guys didn't work at all. Anyway, the game is pretty simple in terms of rendering, and it is a good example of a game that has an easy anti-cheat, and now works fine on Linux. Obviously, since the first video about Linux gaming, there were a lot of game releases and we also decided to test some. In the Hogwarts Legacy, despite the major GPU limitation, we used a GPU-powered recording on the Linux side, because CPU recording ruined all the performance in this test. However, it is obvious from the final graph that even if there is some performance lost on Linux side, it is relatively small and the game works pretty good.
remastered version of Witcher 3 is a relatively poorly optimized game in general, and at least when CPU limited, Linux loses a bit in this test. But again, nothing critical and the game works as it should. The Callisto Protocol is the only new release that demonstrates a fully unacceptable performance on Linux. The test is GPU-bound, and our pretty modern RX 6700 XT easily drops under 20 FPS on Linux. For some reason, for spoking on Linux didn't allow us to go higher than the standard option for model memory, so we had to use the same settings on Windows side. Other than that, the game works surprisingly well on Linux, outperforming the Windows version with original DX12 significantly, at least when GPU bound. Lastly, we have one more additional test. There were a lot of comments that in games where DXPK improved the performance on Linux, it can be used on Windows as well, and this type of comparison would be fair. I don't know if it's fair, but we've tried to run the game with significant boost from DXPK on Windows. Yep, with DXVK on Windows the same level of performance can be achieved. However, it is worth mentioning that DXVK on Windows doesn't support the GPO shader pre-compilation. Moreover, there are a lot of games that don't work on Windows with DXVK when they work on Linux. This is what happened with Watch Dogs 2 when we tried to set it up. However, DXVK on Windows can be a useful tool to increase performance in a lot of DX11, 10 and 9 games. Linux gaming evolves pretty fast, and in fact, even the test you've seen today became pretty old while we were producing this video. And if it isn't as polished as gaming on Windows by any chance now, with this speed of improvement it can get pretty close in the future. 
I guess that's it for now. If you wish to have notifications about a show releasing a video, remember to subscribe and click to the bell icon and don't forget to check our discord server. And as usual, stay up to date with HL. Oh,